Alright, I'm back with you. Uh, it's 12.30 UTC. The footprint of a satellite now is over southern Europe. Uh, well, it's right over the middle of Italy, the northern end of it. Um, as you probably see from the map there. Uh, just picking up on um, south of Spain and coming up on the south of France. Um, so, progressing towards us now nicely. Uh, as you can see the yellow line of trajectory just taking it to uh, the east of my location uh, giving us that 76 degrees elevation I think typically um, good good images can be obtained from um, sort of 20-25 degrees elevation and higher um, from the, the satellite so if you start getting predictions that are, are below certainly I would say 20 degrees then you, 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 you can have a very short pass uh, which will only give you a small band of um, image uh, obviously the the higher that the satellite is over your location which is 76 degrees as it is today is quite a, a good elevation um, the higher that the, the elevation is the longer the satellite is going to be over you uh, and you're going to be able to receive that transmission so you'll get um, as you'll see a, a, a much um, sort of broader image uh, onto the screen uh, as, as that, that image has been downloaded um, and as you play with this system and software you'll, you'll see the benefits of that um, so again uh, just coming up on the um, centre of France there for the northern end of the footprint uh, it's 12.31, uh, another three minutes, four minutes to, to before we're uh, in, in a good uh, footprint area. Uh, but just listen to that audio pulsating again, just give you that idea. Okay, um, as I said to you, the, one of the important things, once you're, you, you're receiving the imagery, is not to have the volume on the uh, receiver set too high as it's uh, going into your laptop because you will over, over deviate the audio and the, the, you'll get like a scatter or splatter across the, the image that you receive um, so in, in the bottom right hand of the screen on the WX2 image software there will be um, a coloured indicator that will indicate the volume that's been received and um, uh, it will tell you if, if you're likely to be over deviating so uh, roughly 50% mark on the, the audio usually is fine and you'll start to uh, receive a really nice image with, with that setting um, so please keep that in mind once, once you're set up um, likewise you can actually test it prior to a satellite coming over rather than using the auto record function that we have using the um, manual record function and listen to a local radio station set it to 50% on there and you'll know that when you're then listening to your satellites that you've got your audio level sat right as to what you would need but it is easily adjustable whilst you're listening to the satellite but if you do it in the middle of the reception it will put a band at, uh, across the, the image that you, you're listening to and you'll see a distinct change in the image that you've downloaded um, where you change the volume um, much like adjusting the contrast on a, a television uh, in the old days at least when we did that um, that you, you'll have a difference straight across the middle of your image okay so we, we should be starting to uh, we're certainly in the footprint now of the image let's see if we can hear the audio from the satellite Okay, so we're not picking anything up just yet. Uh, we're still on the extremities of that footprint, but um, at the moment there's no sort of defined audio tones that will be notable shortly. Um, again, we're on the extremities. Um, the software is automatically picking up on the status bar at the bottom that we're waiting for the uh, the imagery. Let's just go back onto the Okay, just flip between the Satscape 3D view. Um, we should be getting some signal very shortly, some notable audio tones. So we'll flick and remain on here. Okay, 
so the software is automatically picked up now it's starting to download an image albeit at the moment all we're getting a static but it's it's actually activated if you like on the auto record so this is how your image will begin to appear on the bottom there just double check we've got the frequency right 137 yeah that's that's correct <coughs> and it's telling us the actual position of the satellite in respect of our location so current elevation is 7.6 degrees above the horizon 7.8 um, obviously as I say usually typically you start getting a good signal 20 plus degrees above the horizon you start getting a workable signal that you can get an image from uh, so currently we're 9.1 degrees above the horizon obviously if you imagine the um, the location that you're receiving from if you're on top of a, a mountain then you're probably receiving a, a, a good signal at the moment um, but at the moment we're in, a, in a, an urban area houses either side of my antenna uh, albeit I've got it raised um, they're going to affect the signal undoubtedly um, so the higher you can get your mast up the better um, uh, as I say if you're on a mountainside fantastic but typically anything above 20 degrees you start getting a workable signal at the moment we're on 12.8 eight degrees above uh, the horizon and the satellite's still coming over so let's just have a peep at the footprint on satscape oh so if I pick the right menu okay so satellite center of the footprint just over the area of I'd say Libya uh, at the moment we're now picking up some of the audio tones you may I'll, I'll be quiet and let you listen to that starting to hear some of the audio faintly but it's there note the uh, the volume input there in the green 54.1 percent or fluctuating around the 54 percentage there that's fine just leave it set at that this indicator is telling us how much of the pass that we've received so we're 16% into the pass at the moment um, let's get rid of just minimize the map view and now you'll see the image initially we started off with static we're starting to get some definition on the image here and listen to that tone that's really coming clear now Getting sort of a, a TikTok uh, image there. <clears throat> okay, the elevation now is twenty seven point nine degrees, twenty eight degrees above the horizon. Um, and basically the image you're getting is, is what the satellite has seen so uh, as it's working its way northbound um, the camera is uh, giving us some of the footage that it's seen from space or in that low earth orbit as it's called uh, a really good signal coming in now 7db plus 7db on the uh, display on the radio and as you can see that, that, that earlier static is all gone and we're starting to get the clear definition these bands here are, uh, as I understand the telemetry data from the satellite um, I can't explain to you what those are for but I'll just give you a, an idea as to why you've got these bands on the image. Now the image will be split into two halves. You get, um, as I understand it, an infrared image on one side of the screen and the other side of the screen will be the visible image. Um, WX2 image will use those two separate images and the data held within them and the telemetry to uh, process the, the images even further and it'll tell you things like the moisture 
uh, sort of concentration in the cloud, um, air temperatures where you, you have no cloud cover, uh, sea temperatures uh, which we can look at shortly once the images are all been processed um, and all, all sorts of useful information that you can get there so if you if you want to know where it's uh, going to be nice and warm to go and have a, a nice swim on the seaside then uh, you can check the water temperature before you go using this software so if you want to, a quick weekend away use the software and see where the sun's at uh, obviously no guarantees it's going to be there when you get there but look at that the image is now coming much clearer uh, you can see cloud formations there a bit of a landmass there I won't try and second guess where that is at the moment uh, for sake of embarrassing myself um, but uh, that tick tock tone as the satellite image is giving the basically the, the data from if you like left to right of the screen tick tock tick tock tick tock like an old dot matrix printer elevation of a satellite currently 73.9 degrees above us um, so getting close to its maximum elevation before it starts to dip down again uh, I think we were about 76 weren't we today or thereabouts so we're 48% of the way through the pass And the elevation now of the satellite is starting to dip, so it's it's going to be starting to go down in the sky, if you like, um, towards the north now, uh, in the direction of the uh, the North Pole. There, obviously, these are the polar satellites, as they're called. Um, so we'll watch as the image uh, image develops. Ok, starting to hear some static sneaking in again now with the image we're at 34 degrees elevation now um, the, the pass, the useful pass for this satellite is timed at 13 minutes and 4 seconds we're 9 minutes and 14 seconds into that pass <coughs> so as you can see there the, the useful image, if you like, is, is, is realistically in that band there uh, for the, the, the image that we've got and the, the static at the bottom. I would say we will have an equal amount of static at the top uh, shortly. Um, obviously, if we've got a satellite passing as 90 degrees uh, maximum elevation, which is straight overhead, then uh, again, we'd have even an even broader image there. Um, and again, quite a bit to do with the uh, the height of the antenna above the ground before we start receiving that so if we'd have had a, a perfect scenario at the top of a local mountain whatever that may be 
those pieces of static at the bottom will probably be full of imagery rather than static. Okay, that signal starting to drop down there now, about uh, plus three decibels signal on the meter, and uh, the statics coming in again at the top of the image, starting to get reverting to that tick tock as it's, it becomes over the horizon. Um, but uh, certainly looking at that, I think that's the area of uh, the west of France, northern France, I think, I could be wrong, I'll wait for the image to process, <coughs> this looks like uh, Norway, Sweden region, and uh, there's some cloud definition there, and the infrared image this will show us more about where the actual moisture is within that cloud so you can see obviously there's a, a broadband of cloud there this is showing us the, the, the concentrations of moisture within that cloud um, but as we'll see shortly once the image has been processed far more data is uh, is held in those images as we, as we look at it than uh, just the visual things that we can see here uh, so we'll just wait for this to finish itself off um, just short of a, a minute and a half before we we're done here now Yeah, just pure static at the moment uh, from the reception or the receiver as you'll hear once it starts over the horizon we start getting that uh, that tick tock tick tock sound that we were getting earlier on um, Okay, so now the software is automatically processing the, uh, the, the data. Uh, it's building a map for the pass from the satellite. Uh, hopefully shortly will show us an overlay of the boundaries and uh, borders for each country. You can select whether you want particular um, whether you want continents outlining or sort of borders within continents. So it's working its way through at the moment on a slider at the bottom of the screen, 92% complete. We can turn the receiver down now completely. <coughs> and we're processing that data. telling us in the bottom corner of the screen and the bottom left here as to what's occurring um, it's despeckling adjusting the gain adjusting the display and there we have it that's, uh, that's our image it's processing various images from the data that's received working through the infrared I'm not actually doing anything to the, the keyboard or the computer at the moment, this is all being processed itself. Now that's some of the infrared data showing uh, moisture contents. Um, and again the system is, is processing this all itself at the moment. <coughs> ok, 
Okay, it's building the various images that it can it can show us. Sharpening, despeckling, adjusting. All the various images. Still working its way through. Okay. No, still working, still uh, processing. Done. Right, we're done. <coughs> Let's look at some of these images then that we've got. Right. Now, at the moment, because it's on auto record, it's actually in the bottom, it's processed all the data and the images. It's actually now waiting for the next satellite pass in my list. It's waiting for NOAA 18. So, what we need to do is to go up to the top corner here, click on File and just select stop and we can start playing about with the data that we've just downloaded um, audio file, so that's the audio file that we just downloaded, it's a, a thumbnail of it if you like uh, and we'll look at the raw image which is as there, you can see the static, again a thumbnail uh, representation of that raw image um, and the saved images. Now, there we go. This is where it starts to get interesting. <coughs> okay. Um, so if we select those. Right. Now, as you can see, my uh, guess is as to uh, where places were. This is actually enhanced the satellite image by colouring in the continents for us uh, in like a green uh, textured colour there um, so as you can see quite predictably the United Kingdom is uh, is there without that uh, enhancement in green quite difficult to make out amongst all the cloud mass uh, and quite predictably as I say uh, the UK under a huge cloud no change there then um, but you can see that, that sweeping effect of the cloud I'm no weather expert, so I'm not going to try and tell you it's some sort of front or high pressure, low pressure, what have you. You can figure that out for yourselves. But it's fascinating to be able to um, use this free image download. Going back to uh, the thumbnails there. Um, certainly some of the... Look at this. The infrared there. Um, again, the continents tricky to make out but we can we can make out some of the continents down here I think or it could even be a break in the cloud but look at that that's that's all of the um, the different moisture content inside of that cloud um, and we get an idea there of that's where the rain's at guys that's where the snow's at you know um, looking at the bottom corner here in the, in the red uh, you know that's definitely you know cloud burst kind of um, cloud uh, people are getting uh, a drenching from that uh, so useful again you know if you're uh, out camping or whatever you you're into your radio uh, if you've got the laptop with you take the uh, quadrophilia stick it on the roof rack and uh, you can be independent from any uh, weather forecasts and news and you can you can see what's coming certainly in respects of the the rain uh, and again compare two or three different satellite passes and you can see the direction it's all traveling in um, okay again different images there um. <coughs> now there is a an option to see for instance sea surface temperature if we look at the enhancements uh, image uh, it will allow us to see sea surface temperature decoding options not available when viewing image use file open raw image so we need to look at the raw image for that kind of data apparently so let's see let's 
loading itself up right then hmm let's have the raw image enhancements sea surface yes we've got that ticked So I've clicked on the enhancements, selected the sea surface temperature, and okay, yeah, that's that's got it. So the colouring is showing us the uh, the temperature. If we look now, uh, the mouse—I don't know if you can see it—or the cursor is hovering just here, where the light blue colouring is. And at the bottom of the screen here, it's telling us from the satellite data that's 13.8 degrees centigrade um, let's look here in the black now this is the, the black is actually the cloud if I understand it rightly rather than the sea because the satellite can't see the sea through the cloud so this is the cloud uh, the satellite can see the sea here so if we look again at the blue there we go there's a the cursor and the sea temperature is 11.4 degrees um, just hovering there in the purple and it's 0.8 degrees so you can see there's a distinct difference there in the temperatures hover on the dark blue let's hover on the dark blue just there um, 8.8 degrees um, so you can see let's just vary it uh, okay, so that's purple is 0 0.8, 3.8 just on the edge of the blue, sneaking up to 5. Uh, okay, so certainly um, I think that was uh, the French coastline, if my memory serves me right. So looking down here towards Aquitaine, the direction of Baritz one of our favourite holiday destinations in the summer and it's 9.3 degrees uh, down there or thereabouts um, so still going to be chilly a lot colder than body temperature uh, wetsuit weather um, but to imagine the usefulness of, of that if, if it's uh, key you know whether you're a crab fisherman or um, or just getting on holiday and the uh, that's uh, let's have a look at some of these other enhancements here. Thermal, so we can pick up the, the, the air temperature, <coughs> or is it the ground temperature? So it's now processing the raw image data for the thermal temperatures. Uh, and again, as we hover around, now it looks like it's picking the temperature up in the cloud, uh, because when we look at the the dense cloud areas, and then when we looked down here on this area where the moisture was and somebody was getting that cloud burst that we discussed um, minus 39 degrees C it within that cloud so obviously as that um, as that moisture descends and warms up you're, you're looking at obviously ice <laughs> at that height um, but uh, once it descends it'll get warmer and become sleet hail uh, snow maybe even uh, get warm enough to become uh, just rain uh, let's look at the warmer areas or what appear to be the warmer areas uh, so just looking up here uh, minus 3.3 so this is going to be at some altitude guys don't forget obviously the higher up you get and the altitude the cooler things get um, but what a difference there in that corner um, let's see what the coldest is we can find with it let's hover the mouse around uh, minus 49.6 there so uh, fascinating data absolutely fascinating um, coming up to this, this little blue area here minus 30.6 let's look at some of the other enhancements we can get uh, vegetation uh, let's 
let's have a look at that that's processing itself right okay uh, warning enhancement ignored could not find sensor 1 and sensor 2 image for vegetative index enhancement so it looks like that, that particular satellite doesn't give us that data uh, we can look here for colour infrared enhancement, general infrared enhancement, thunderstorms, warm seasons and hurricanes. So let's have a look at thunderstorms and see if anywhere's getting a thunderstorm from the data that they got there or even how that's depicted. <coughs> Maybe there are no thunderstorms on that map, but uh, again it's, it's telling us the temperature of that cloud and moisture in the cloud um, nothing obvious to me there that appears to be a thunderstorm but maybe these denser areas could be or perhaps there's no thunderstorms on this particular pass so hopefully guys that's give you some indication as to uh, the usefulness of uh, the weather satellite images they are free to download you don't breach any kind of legislation in listening to them um, obviously if you were to start selling the imagery there may be some uh, copyright issues there but free to download and to utilize for your own personal use um, have a play around with it WX2IMG there's a software that we've used to download the satellite image and Satscape is the other piece of software that we used to view the satellite coming in to pass uh, free both free pieces of software as you can see now the satellite we looked at up over the north pole imagine being able to view that that'd be quite well it'd be a very white image i would imagine in the areas it is but imagine the temperatures at the ground level um, Quadrophilia Helix antenna, as I say, about £20 and a bit of tinkering around uh, to build that. Um, I built mine using uh, 90 degree unions for central heating plumbing. Um, and if you, you know, amateur radio is all about let's get out and let's have a go at building these things ourselves, guys. There's videos out there, I'll tell you on YouTube how to do a little bit of plumbing and join copper pipes. You don't even have to worry about this one being watertight so uh, have a go at it uh, on a uh, you know a, a, a wet sunday afternoon perhaps uh, kill some time and have some fun with the kids um you can take these antennas away with you uh you can as i say you can use a beam antenna if you want to uh but you've literally got to track it across the sky with your arm and uh, you will get different bands of static as you start receiving the image coming in and coming out as the signal phases so give it a go guys uh, all good fun uh, I'm Lee M0LPD and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short video clip thank you